Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today online. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Brandon Thompson. I'm the pastor at Ember Tide Church, and I want to just start off by saying thanks so much for worshiping with us online today, and we're praying that God will speak to you in a real and powerful way. Before we jump in, though, I want to share with you a couple of important things that you might find interesting. Uh, the first is that we're going to be celebrating communion today, so you'll probably want to pause this video for a second and go grab some of the communion elements, and that way you'll be able to join with us at the end of the service as we celebrate communion together and, and enjoy that special time. Also, today we're having Christy Short share with us, and Christy Short is no stranger to Ember Tide. Her and her family were a huge part of our church family uh, for a long time, and then she's taken a role with Alpha Canada and is now living in Fredericton, and so we are excited to welcome her back uh, to share with you. Uh, and to share with us. And so we are just praying that God would use her words uh, to accomplish some major things in our lives. And so also, I want to just give you a couple updates on some things. We are getting all sorts of registrations for our community-wide Easter egg hunt. And that's exciting, but it also means we have to be bringing in more candy. Uh, and so if you feel led to help us out in that way, we would appreciate that. And we could still use a few volunteers on the ground on the day of the event, April the 9th, uh, to help make that run smoothly. I also want to just share too that maybe you've been seeing some of just the horrific images uh, from the Ukraine that are, are just really disturbing, you know, just different uh, civilians being uh, hurt and bombed and over 10 million Ukrainians displaced, most of them women and children, and it's just, it breaks your heart. Uh, and so I wanted to share with you a way to give, a way to support, and a lot of us feel helpless in all of this, but one thing that we are seeing is that through our brothers and sisters uh, in the church in Ukraine and in Poland and in the surrounding areas, Moldova, uh, we are seeing them really step up and welcoming in uh, refugees and welcoming in all these displaced people who are just going through a difficult time. And so one of the best ways that you can give is through our kind of umbrella corporation, Canadian Baptist Ministries at cbmin.org. And they have, uh, you know, direct routes to helping people uh, who are most directly impacted. And so we want to be able to, to give our, our donations towards that. And so I just encourage you to do that as uh, we continue to just pray for peace and reconciliation there. Um, and, and just pray that, that these families will be reunited again. Also just want to continue uh, to lift up our suburban monastery and put that in front of you as well. Last week we heard some really great things about what it's going to look like from Angela and we're starting to see triads come together. It looks like we have seven or eight triads already and that's exciting. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, we would love for you to be a part of it. And I've had some questions, do we need to be a part of Ember Tide in order to be a part of the suburban monastery? And the answer is no. Uh, we would love to be able to just welcome you into this element. And if that's something that interests you, please uh, reach out and you can get a hold of us by going to embertide.ca slash contact and you'll be able to, to get a hold of someone who can answer your questions. Uh, with all that being said, I want to just say, let us just pause and ask God to lead us as we worship together. Um, and then we will jump right into it. So let's just pause and pray. Father God, as we begin this time together, we are thankful um, for the way that you're moving in our lives. Lord, we acknowledge that, that you are drawing us closer to yourself, and we just pray that you would, you would help us to lean into that and to step forward into that. I pray, God, that you would be with Christy as she shares with us today. We're thankful for the gifts that you have given her, and we just pray, God, that you would use her um, to teach us and to show us and to help us grow in our love and knowledge of you. And so God, we just ask a blessing upon our service today, and we just pray that you would be present in our time together. In Jesus' name we pray all these things together. Amen. You 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every Keep light in the darkness, my God. 
there. Hi, everyone. It's Christy Short, and it's so nice to be here today with my Ember Tide friends. Um, it's just a wonderful opportunity today to be with all of you, to maybe give our pastor a little break. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Christy Short, um, and I was a longtime attender and uh, at Ember Tide and enjoyed serving there for a number of years in the kids ministry, um, in mom's group, and even running Alpha. And now I work for Alpha Canada. And I want to tell you a little bit about my job there. I'm a senior advisor, and my role is really to help new people, new churches discover Alpha um, and find a way for them to run it, uh, to have impact in their church and in their community. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Alpha, Alpha is a series of interactive sessions over about 11 weeks. Um, and each session includes a time of connection over food or an icebreaker, um, a time of content, which is a video that has teaching and stories and testimonies, and then a time of conversation. It's a chance for anyone who's coming to Alpha to ask questions, to share their thoughts, feelings, and experiences um, as it connects to the material. Alpha is an introduction to the basics of the Christian faith, and every session revolves around like an essential question like, um, who is Jesus and why did he die? How can I pray? How to read the Bible? And so there is lots of uh, material and opportunities for people to explore faith and Christianity in a safe and supportive environment. And so that's Alpha. It's a tool that anyone can use um, in your home, online, or in your church uh, to create a safe place for people to come and explore uh, the deeper questions of life. And so today, I'm glad that you're here. Um, I hope that you are well. And I just want to share a few other resources that we have here at Alpha Canada. And the first one is something that's coming up. On May 2nd and 3rd, Alpha International is hosting a leadership conference. This conference is online and you can register uh, through our website, I believe, or at least through our um, newsletter. So you can go to alphacanada.org and discover all our resources there. But coming up May 2nd and 3rd is an amazing conference featuring um, leaders from around the world um, sharing. You'll get to hear from Nikki and his wife, Pippa. Uh, there'll be a time of worship and there'll be time of prayer and prayer ministry. So lots of opportunities to get encouraged, uh, whether you're leading in the church or in your home or at your work. So I'd love for you to join, love for you to join us uh, May 2nd and 3rd for the leadership conference. Then I want to tell you about a new resource from Alpha Canada called Life on Purpose. And this is a program developed for um, youth and teens. It's a four video session series um, with discussion based on sort of what it means to now live your life for God, live a life on purpose with Christ. And so there's incredible stories, amazing testimonies, and really great conversation featuring um, sort of a whole panel of teens and youth leading experts. And so if you're interested in life on purpose, you can go to our website, um, alphacanada.org slash life on purpose, and you can download it totally for free. That's right. All of the material from Alpha is completely free because of the generous donations of people and ministries across Canada um, that support us. And we're so thankful. So that's Life on Purpose, if you want to check that out. And then similarly, we have Life Shared, which is a three video series all around um, sharing the gospel and the good news with those around you by sharing your life. Um, it's about hospitality and how to use the gifts that God has given you. And it's about just taking those next steps with the people that God has put on your path to share the good news with. And so that's Life Shared. And in a few minutes, you're going to get a taste of that. We're going to watch a video together. Um, the video has sort of question prompts throughout that's geared towards if you were running it live um, with a group to have discussion. But take a moment to ponder those questions Questions when they come up. This is a chance for you to sort of reflect on your experience um, as a person following Christ, or if you're new to faith, this is a great way to start thinking about what it means to share your faith with others. So we're going to hear from Jason Ballard. We're going to hear from John Tyson. It's a great short video. You're also going to hear a few testimonies of people who have come to faith on Alpha. And so I hope that you would enjoy this first video from Life Shared called Join His Heart. Well, just before we jump in the video, I would love to pray with you. And so if we just take a minute, um, let's just close our eyes and ask the Holy Spirit to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill each one um, online here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who showed up today to do church online. Thank you, Lord, that they are seeking you. 
God, and that they desire to know you well. I pray that you would uh, be revealing to their heart and mind people that they can share their, their knowledge and love for you with. God, you have put people in their life and in their family and in their work who are actually desperate to know you. And so, Lord, I pray that um, they would be inspired today by uh, the video, that they would be inspired by the way that you have transformed their lives to share it with others. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you do and for the way that you work in and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to check out any of our material at alphacanada.org, and I'll see you. Thanks. Bye. I've been following Jesus now for more than 15 years. And even after all of these years, I'm still struck by the way someone's life can be totally changed when God enters their story. And I bet you've seen this too. Like there's nothing quite like watching somebody go from hopelessness to being full of hope, or when someone's weighed down by shame or fear, and then they experience freedom and courage. And even as I'm talking about this right now, I find myself longing to see this happen around me more often. Another thing that strikes me after this many years of following Jesus is how hard I can sometimes find it to share my faith with others. I can still find it intimidating or awkward to talk to my friends about Jesus. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. And so in this series, we wanna spend the next three sessions talking about it. We wanna look at how we can all play a part in seeing lives transformed around us. We're gonna look at themes like invitation and hospitality and prayer, and what it could mean for us to share our lives and our faith with others. In each episode, we'll hear a few of our friends unpacking some of these ideas, and we'll also hear stories of people that have shared their faith with their friends at Alpha. If you're unfamiliar with Alpha, it's a, it's a course where you can invite your friends to explore the Christian faith over a meal. And throughout this journey, you'll have a chance to talk together about how these ideas and stories might affect the way you think about sharing your faith. So to start things off, take a few minutes right now to talk with your group about what feelings or thoughts come up for you around this idea of sharing your faith. In general, people feel pretty overwhelmed with the idea of evangelism. I think a lot of people feel like in order to share their faith, they need a master's degree in ethics and a master's degree in apologetics. So just telling people, go out there and share your faith, in some sense, can be very, very overwhelming. The fears are of not having the information they need, not having answers to the, the larger questions, not being able to convey those in such a short period of time, uh, feeling the pressure to get it right, um, outcome anxiety. Sometimes we make um, sharing God's love and evangelism too complicated. There's uh, three phrases in the New Testament that talk about Jesus' mission. The first phrase says, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Then it says, the Son of Man came to give his life as a ransom for many. So this is the purpose of God. He came to seek and save. He came as the Savior from our sin. The third time that that phrase is used, the Son of Man came, is actually about the methodology or the way that he did it. He did it. It said, the Son of Man came eating and drinking. And that was his methodology. His mission was to serve. His mission was to save. The way he did it was by eating and drinking. So to me, hospitality and reclaiming this vision of hospitality is the way that we take steps towards engaging people in the world. Almost every time you see Jesus in the gospel, he is eating, going to someone's house, leaving someone's house, on his way to someone's house or with another meal. In fact, if you were to say, take Luke's gospel, 
It just moves from hospitality moment to hospitality moment to hospitality moment, ultimately culminating with Jesus around the table, talking about his uh, death. And then after his resurrection, he's with his disciples again, breaking bread and talking. And it seems that when you get around a table, you get around a meal, it just creates this space for the ministry of Jesus to happen in the lives of others. So to me, I think one of the central ways and the easiest ways is moving towards hospitality, opening up our hearts and lives and inviting other people in. You know, one of the challenges of living in our modern life, our lives are so fast. They can just be a blur. We move so quickly that we can often just, it's not that God's not working. We're just not aware of what's actually happening. And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, one of the things that's always stood out to me is Jesus' ability just to see people. Jesus saw people everybody else overlooked. He saw blind people, he saw sinners, he saw those who needed healing. And often the disciples would just rush past them like they were irrelevant so they could get onto bigger things. But Jesus just noticed the individual. So in many ways, we need to just reclaim the art of paying attention to what God's doing around us. And sometimes it's not very dramatic. There's no, there's no pillar of fire, there's no cloud. It's just a prompting or a response or listening to a tone in somebody's voice or hearing a strain in something that they're communicating or deep details they continually bring up about areas of concern. And those little moments can often be invitations or windows into what's happening behind the scenes. And that's often the Holy Spirit highlighting His work so that we can respond and step into that and see God's love move into that person's life. So I was thinking about this as a pastor in New York. One day I got into a taxi and uh, we were driving past a restaurant that was one of my favorite restaurants and it was always popular. There was a line out the door and I'd struck up a conversation with the taxi driver and he was an immigrant like I was. And there was a lot of controversy at the time about immigrants and people moving to this nation. There was a lot of fear of the other. Who were these people coming in? Would they disrupt our way of life? A lot of political commentary like that. But I, as we began to talk, all of those stereotypes fell away and we just found ourselves being fathers, both from different places, trying to make our way into this country. And as we moved past this particular restaurant with a line out the door, I said to him, hey, have you ever eaten there? Have you tried that food? And he said to me, no, I, I always see the lines there. I've always wondered if it's good. So I said to him, hey, if you leave the meter running in the taxi and I run in and grab some of that food, do you wanna just sit here and keep talking? And he said, would you really do that? And I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. So I ran in and I got him some of this food and it was actually this, almost like a transcendent moment. It was two men from other sides of the world sitting in a taxi, sharing food and all of the stereotypes about who he was and what he represented just melted away. And we had in the middle of New York, this little portal of belonging that broke in in the midst of all of the stereotypes, all of the suspicion, just opening our hearts, sharing our stories. And it was, it was the, the highlight of my day. And as we got out of the taxi, I realized that's exactly what had happened. This environment of welcome shifted our understanding of each other. And this community of belonging was formed even for a moment in a taxi on the side of the street in the middle of New York. And I couldn't help but wonder what would happen in our lives if we just paid attention to those little promptings and these environments of welcome, these little portals of hospitality broke out. And if that became a normal practice for followers of Jesus in coffee shops, in workplaces, on sports field, with soccer moms, everybody, there would just be these, this deconstruction of fear and there would be an, an inbreaking of love and welcome. And that may be what we're called to do as followers of Jesus in our time. Growing up, I was in a very atheist household. It was my mother, my brother and I. They didn't go to church. They didn't follow any religion of any sort. When I was 19, I was coming out of a really awful relationship that had lasted the good majority of three years. It was really hard on me mentally, emotionally, physically, just very dark and negative and toxic. I remember one day just being in the room alone, quiet and sad, and it felt 
like something was in the room with me, if you want to explain it that way. I just felt some, something caring for me. And I asked the question, is this God? Is this, you know, Jesus trying to get through to me? So I was left with um, a lot of questions. I would say there were uh, quite a few like curious people there, either people that had grown up in a Christian background or had known people. I wondered what it would look like just to host an Alpha for my friends and particularly my coworkers. I was definitely pretty nervous just because obviously it's really easy to make a name for yourself at your workplace because you're there all the time, whether it's like, oh, you could be like the really fun one, or it's like very easily you could be like, oh, that Christian that always asks people to go to church. And I didn't want her to think that our friendship was just so I could invite her to church. So Ashton and I were working a shift together. Uh, we were walking past each other and she stopped me from where I was going and just said it very directly, casually, I want you to come to an Alpha. What day is gonna work for you? What day is consistent for you? And I was immediately drawn and ready to um, participate in it. There's not really a, like a super easy way to do it. Um, there's no, if you're ever waiting for like the right time, there's like, there's t times that are better than others, but there's not like a time that it really like, you're like, this is the moment. So I showed up at Alpha for the first time. Um, it was very welcoming, very casual. Uh, lots of people that I knew were there all my age. So, you know, you walk in, people were hugging, people were saying hello, people were catching up, there was food there. So it just felt like you were going to hang out with your friends. A lot of people had questions just like I did. They were either atheist, Christian, um, nothing. Like they just had the same questions as me. So I felt very comfortable knowing that I wasn't the only one who was exploring it. Maybe halfway, maybe like three quarters, we were just talking and it was discussion time. She's like, yeah, well like now that I'm Christian and I was like, what? And I was like, uh, and I was like, kind of like look at other people that I, like I know and I looked at them, they looked at me and I was like. Things just started to make sense for me. Things started clicking. My past, there were like certain connecting dots mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And then, yeah, I think I just told you one day. Yeah. It wasn't like a huge big bang or like I saw the light or anything. It was just, I woke up, I'm like, this is who I am. Yeah. I just. I like firmly believe like obviously it wasn't me that like brought you to Christ and like gave you this life. It was like I was just being like faithful. It's like God's call and that looked like inviting you and then he like did the rest and he like obviously like does so much for your life and I think you just kind of helped me like see a little clearer or like yeah. help me yeah move a little bit closer. Yeah. God pulled through. Whenever I'm part of a conversation like this, like a conversation about sharing my faith or evangelization, I find that there are a few different emotions at play inside of me at the same time. There's this part of me that's really excited, you know, excited about going forward with new intentionality in this area. There's a part of me that feels thankful hearing how God has impacted people's lives. And I can also experience feelings of guilt about not doing enough in the past, or even some fear or uncertainty about what this could look like going forward. And I bet you can relate to this. And for me, I've found the most comfort when I move my attention from what I haven't done or have to do and turn it to what God has done and is actively doing in the lives of the people we meet every day. And that's the big idea I think we need to pull from this session, that God is at work around us and we're invited to join Him. We don't have to wonder if God wants to reach people or not. He does and is, and we're welcome to be part of it. And this realization allows me to approach situations in my day-to-day -day life with more openness and curiosity. Curiosity about people and about what God might be up to. I find myself less overwhelmed by like a vague sense of duty or guilt. And I find a healthy conviction and motivation by a sense of being invited into what God is doing. Why don't you take some time right now to talk about this idea a little bit more. In your discussion, unpack your thoughts and feelings about the themes and ideas that have come up in this first session. Thanks, Christy, so much for sharing with us. And it's amazing to see 
just what God can do through things like Alpha, and we are praying that Alpha would continue to have a huge impact on, on people's lives all across the world. And as we gather together now, we're going to gather for communion. And one of the most beautiful things about communion is the fact that, that Jesus tells us that as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming his death until he comes. And as we tell the story once again to ourselves, as we remind ourselves of what Jesus did for us, and as we prepare ourselves to go out into the world to share the story of Jesus and what he accomplished for us on the cross with the world around us, with our families, with our, with our co-workers, um, with our neighbors, um, it's a chance for us to kind of just recenter again and touch home base and be able to just recalibrate even uh, for the week ahead. And, and so I want you to, to not go into this lightly. And I know at home it might be a little bit difficult with kids running around or distractions or whatever, but I'm just praying that you would be able to take a few minutes and just pause and to reflect. And, and Jesus calls us to, to not partake in communion in an unworthy manner, um, that we need to prepare ourselves for it and that we need to get ready for it. And so if there are things that, that you need to confess and get right before the Lord before you jump into communion, I just want to give us an opportunity to do that. And so let's uh, pause for a minute and then I'll lead us in taking communion. Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, had gathered all the disciples up together in the upper room. And as they celebrated the Passover meal, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said that this is my body that's broken for you. And so take and eat and remember him. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus also on the night in which he was betrayed took a cup of wine and he said this is my blood that will be shed for you and it's a symbol of the new covenant uh, sealed in my blood and as the lamb who would take away the sins of the world he would shed his blood for each and every one of us the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins yet God in his graciousness sent his son to shed his blood for our, on our behalf. And so take this and drink it and remember Christ's sacrifice for you. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We're pleased to be able to celebrate this time together with you. And so I just, I'm praying that it, would be, it was a blessing to you today. So have a great week and we'll see you again next week.